Pisces, welcome to your weekly tarot reading. This one is for November 20th through to the 26th. So we'll jump in and see what's on the cards for you. If you wouldn't mind hitting the like button for me, you might want to drop me a comment and please do subscribe to my channel if you enjoy these readings. It's what keeps them coming in an engagement based algorithm. It also helps me connect with your energy and read for you when you come into the collective in one of those ways. So I'd really appreciate that. If you want a personal reading or healing at any time, follow the first link down below to my website you can check out what I offer there there are other links down below uh, you'll find my freebie my free learn tarot quick guide if you'd like to get started interpreting the cards for yourself there's also my immersive paid journey how to learn a full foundation in tarot uh, as well as my signature reading process that is an immersive online tarot course that is linked down below as well as my karmic community and uh, my Instagram I'm really active and interactive over there with a lot of content I'll also be going live on Friday the 17th of November 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time which is 6 p.m. in New York and I'm going to be talking about my journey so if you are intrigued as to what brings one to do such work and enter the psychic space after having a really established career doing something else that was really successful um yeah there is a big story behind it I'm going to be talking about that you'll also get to ask questions and I haven't ever gone live before and discussed any of this so you can feel free to join me on my Instagram there is a grid post with the details so yeah I might see you there I, I'm I'm gonna lean into the challenge because you know lives I haven't done one I've kind of avoided it so yeah I might see you there let's get into your reading Pisces you're very close to achieving your goal Yes, right. What have you been working towards, Pisces? I mean, are you trying to reach a savings goal, a health goal, a, you know, conceiving a child goal, um, a housing goal, relocation goal? It will be different for all of you, but you are being told you're very close. So it's not a time to give up or back down. This is a keep going energy. Just because it hasn't come into fruition or you haven't seen the results yet doesn't mean to say they're not coming. I mean, we plant a seed in the ground, right? And sometimes it's months before we see the green shoots, but it's gestating under, you know, under the earth where we ha still have to nurture it. We still have to put energy into it. And we don't know if a bird's come and plucked that seed out or whether it's gone bad. But we trust if we do the right things and luck is on our side then generally that green shoot will appear and lead to a bloom. So the high priestess is here and she's interesting because, you know, she says your intuition is probably telling you that you, you will achieve this goal, but the logical doubts and fears can creep in. The high priestess does link to fertility, which is about growth, right? So just what that theme that we were talking about you know, whether it's, you know, fertility and having a baby or fertility and growing a business, like there's a birthing or gestation period that I'm feeling here. And High Priestess, you know, is is the story of Persephone in Greek mythology. Like it's a hell and back journey. Like you've probably been through a lot of loops here and a lot of challenges and you might have had setbacks, but you're on the threshold of crossing over to results. That's what she's saying. And maybe you're beginning to feel that even though you haven't seen it. Or you're being asked to trust that. Okay. I'll draw you four cards from the Rider Waite Pisces. I will clarify them as I go. King of Swords. Aquarian energy is situational energy for you. Your challenge is the Eight of Pentacles. Okay. Advice. Oh, the sun. Beautiful. See, that is the blooms coming out. That's the growth. That's the growth. Maybe it just needs a little bit more cooking with the sun. And the page of swords. That's the that's the shift, all right? That's the shift. All right, so I'll clarify as I read these positions. Situational energy, Aquarian energy of the King of Swords. And it comes through with the Ten of Cups. So whatever it is that you're trying to create you believe or that this is you know a step towards your best life like the ten of cups is happiness it's having your resource needs met it's having a family and partner you know beautiful life beautiful life energy your ten of cups might be different to my ten of cups but generally it involves a few different things you know having enough money for the lifestyle we want to live being surrounded by loved ones and, and community in a place that we can access 
the activities that, that make us feel great. So I feel that whatever it is that you're trying to achieve with this goal is, is what brings you closer to that. So that could be making enough money so I can buy a house or you know, starting my own business so I can move to the country and work online and check out the system. You know, uh, it could be, you know, adding to your family because you've got a dream of having the, like, you know, big, beautiful family Christmases, that type of thing. So you're working away behind the scenes here to make that happen, but maybe you haven't seen all the results here and you're being told that the sun is coming through and you're going to see those results. So do keep going. The King of Swords does ask you to see the big picture here because if you're thinking, oh, it hasn't happened yet, I'm in a hurry, you know, good things do take time. And like I said, there's a gestation period and we have to trust in divine timing. But also the King of Swords does ask you to look at the strategies that you're using because sometimes it involves innovation, Aquarian energy, innovation, the use of technology in different ways. Um, being strategic, you know, being a bit of a operations manager about this. So yeah, we might need to take a little bit of a strategic approach here with this, but I feel like you can transform this. Eight of Pentacles in the challenge. You have been working on this. And like I said, you, that's why there's the confusion of, well, well, why? Like, where's my outcome? And well, like I said, there might be a little shift that you can take, or maybe it's just a matter of timing. The Hermits come through. Virgo energy and the hermit can talk about deep reflection and introspection and feeling a little bit lost or in the dark with it all but the hermit does link to the light like it links to the first glimmer of the star energy which is also Aquarian energy which is the stars aligning which we actually see in this card here too so it says that like slowly but surely you are actually working towards this the stars are lining up but you haven't reached that critical turning point yet. It's funny how I see the number nine there, which is that, you know, gestation period. So it could have been like nine, nine months or nine years that you've been working on this. Um, but soon the sun will come out. So the sun is here, Leo energy, which asks you to have the strength, courage and bravery to keep going, keep pushing towards this call of the heart because things are blooming. We have birth happening here. Um, we have obstacles being overcome and the sun is always a yes card that brings the victory and allows you to to move forward they say it's the most positive card in the tarot deck actually so that's and the future is bright ahead so yeah and like the look the nine of wands coming in in reverse with the nine of cups at the bottom nine 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 is your angel number here let's put it up here just so that we can read it the nine of wands is always my nine year or nine month struggle card like this has been a goal for a really long time like whether or not you've actually been working on it for that long like you've been you know manifesting it you've been simmering it you know it is a really big wish or dream here that we are dealing with but the nine of wands for me is a you're so close to crossing the line but yes you are feeling like a bit of a wounded warrior with a few battle scars to show but the page of swords would talk about you know, it would talk about the winds of change blowing to just the point where our boat, you know, shifts course, right? So for me, it's always like the shift that you need to bring this into fruition. What are we going to clarify that with? The King of Cups. And that's, that's Scorpio energy. And we are in Scorpio season right on the tail end so I feel like there'll be a shift in this actually maybe this week uh yeah that, that I mean that's that's what that is I mean Scorpio energy brings death and rebirth you know it's also asking you to if there is anything that you feel is blocking or your energy is going in any areas that are not productive and not directly aligned with this then you know you might need to be the, tank, the king of swords who's being really strategic, cutting away, setting boundaries so that we can open up the full energy to channel into this. You might be dealing with a Scorpio, of course. And the seven of swords. Yeah, so I feel that the, the mitigating of the seven of swords is important. So that would be don't give up, but also look at where your energy and resources are going right as not to to be a sabotaging 
force, but you might feel very seven of swordsy about this at the moment. Like, you know, feel hard done by. But Queen of Wands is here and that's an Aries energy of determination. And if we stay in that determined energy and keep going, generally the manifestation comes through. And it's it's interesting because she's shown in the right of way deck, this one here, with a just one single sunflower. If I find it in time while I'm chatting about this, I'll show you. But look at that sun energy there and there how there's all the sunflowers. So what I'm feeling is that although, here we go, you know, it might not be the full, like, realization of this, this ha that happens in November, but it feels like there is a key step. Like, for those of you trying to conceive, it might be you find out that you're pregnant, right? Uh, but you've got nine months to go after that, of course. For those of you who are on, like, a savings or business goal, like, you win your first client or, you know, you see uh, an elevation to your savings or you pay off that debt, finally everything is now going in the positive. It's the shift is in November that brings the first result or the like the first success or outcome. But the high priestess says that you are only at the threshold of where this can grow to. So keep going because you're working towards your 10 of cups. Soon one sunflower will become many, become a field. I'm going to leave it there, Pisces, and I hope you enjoyed this message. I most surely did. I'm really feeling this deeply. It's very positive. Keep going. Uh, if you want a personal reading to tune in this, to this energy for your specific personal circumstances, do follow the first link down below. Uh, if you would like to join my conversation uh, live on Instagram, do pop over there and you will find the post that will reiterate the time and date for you. And you just need to jump on and join the live and you can ask questions. I won't be directing the conversation. It's uh, Lisa Rapp's um, show. But uh, yeah, we will be answering your questions and she will be doing a bit of an interview. So I'd love to have you with me and um, I'll try not to be too nervous. <laughs> so bear with me because I don't do lives, but I'm going to give it my best shot. I'm going to be the queen of wands about it because I'm am an Aries. So I'll leave it there. And I'm just sending you so much love and magic, Pisces. Do take care. Bye for now.